All right, everyone, here we are with ticker symbol HYLN, Hylion Holdings Corp, previously known as Tortoise Acquisition, and trading under the ticker symbol previously that was SHLL. Before we jump into this chart, I want to say welcome to all my first time viewers and investors. Welcome to my channel, Invest for Tomorrow. To all my subscribers, welcome back, and let's jump into this chart. So, Hylion has been in a bearish run. We have seen it. For quite some time now for a whole entire month basically it had broken through the 50-day moving average it's been in bearish trajectory for a while and the bulls tried breaking through it several times i'd say about significantly about five times two times here two times here and another time here so five times and i had stated that if it broke through certain numbers we would see newer lows and right now this is hanging out at one of the lowest points or close to one of the lowest points after the 20 dollars mark that i had spoken about and the next point would be down here around 17 dollars and some change now it did reach 17 dollars almost but it touched it here twice at the 18 10 cent mark that is the lowest point we've seen in this bearish run and it almost reached the 17 dollars mark and missed it by a little bit it held itself up and the bulls you can see they are fighting back they're trying to keep themselves above the resistance as much as they can they've tried three times and it dipped and uh, one of the last times is here now closer to aftermarket hours and we have to see if the bulls can continue to try to put up this fight and build momentum here to break through resistance hold themselves up reach the 50 day moving average and get back into bullish territory. So very important for every investor to keep in mind, 1810 is the most important support level right now in this whole chart. If it was to go in the other direction, if it was to go in the direction where the bulls are losing control and the bears are continuing to tear this down. 1810, if that gets broken through, it's going to be very significant. Pay very close attention to how the stock is reacting and how quickly is it hitting newer lows but let's go ahead and move this to the new point of the lowest point reached today and also the higher points reached today so let's look at this based off of what the chart is showing and also this resistance is very important it has not been able to be broken through and that's 1897 you can keep that as a point of reference but the most important number now is the highest point reached in the day and we're going to look at that now as well this is our new resistance level and our new supports. So the 50 day moving average is up here at 1935. Super important number. As long as we're below it, the bears are in control. The moment we cross 1935 and pull away from it, we're getting deeper into bullish territory and the bulls are starting to gain control. But before breaking through the 50 day moving average, the bulls need to break through resistance. That resistance is 1919 that's the highest point that they reached today that is one of the most important points right now for the bulls to continue this momentum and get closer to the 50-day moving average to get back into bullish territory so 1919 needs to be turned into a support and the bulls need to pull away from it to get closer to the 50-day moving average once again as i've stated earlier to get back into bullish territory and start to reach new highs and new resistance levels now, if the bulls break through 1919, it does not signify that they've confirmed gaining control over the chart and that they're on their way to the 50 day moving average. That is just one stepping stone to get there. We're still in bearish territory between 1919 and 1935. There's still that window where the bears can actually reappear and stop the bulls from crossing over. So it's super important to keep that in mind and that is just an indicator breaking through this resistance and turning it into support for us investors on where this is probably heading and that it's getting closer to the 50 day moving average, which is a good indicator for the bulls. Now, on the other hand, we have our support levels. Now, keep in mind, 1810 is a very important support level. But before getting there, there's a new support level that formed based off of the chart and the lowest point reached today. And that's 1822. If 1822 gets broken through from where we're at now at 1876, 
we're pulling further away from the 50 day moving average in a downward direction, giving more control to the bears and the bears are going to try to break away from that support level to hit new lows and new support levels. So super important. I want to emphasize to all investors, pay close attention to how this stock is reacting and how quickly is it moving further away from the 50 day moving average. If it breaks through support and how quickly is it testing newer lows and new support levels. Super important to keep in mind the behavior of this stock, how it's reacting, if it breaks through the support level, and how quickly is it on its way to 1810, and if it's going to break through 1810 to hit newer lows and pull further away from the 50 day moving average in a downward direction. So keep that in mind as well. And 1810 is the lowest point in this whole bearish run that it has touched. So 1822 is very close to that point. And I would really pay close attention to the behavior and how it's reacting. Put your one minute, your five minute, your 15 minute chart frames and see the inflow and the outflow to know who is dominating this chart. I hope that with these cues, you guys are prepared for tomorrow's trading day. And anybody that feels encouraged or inclined to subscribe, please do so. Don't forget to click on the bell to turn on all notifications and not miss a single video that I post. Share this with your friends and community. And don't forget to hit that like button to let me know you watch this video. Also, once you guys see at the end of this video, there's going to be a pop up video. In that video, I'll be discussing about the S&P 500 index and how it's been rising several points on scheduled dates. Well, what does that mean for us as investors? Well, if the S&P 500 index is rising up several points, well, it's due to something right on these specific dates. The Federal Reserve is pumping the markets. You can see the charts. And you can see the dates they speak for themselves and i go into more detail about it in the video what does that mean for us well if the s p 500 index is rising there's individual ticker symbols rising up with it anywhere from 30 cents to three dollars per share i know it doesn't sound like a lot but per share that does add up and profits are profits i highly recommend checking out the video it should be popping up soon if it hasn't already click on it and thank you guys for watching and let's make some money at the end of this video there's going to be a pop-up video and i go into detail about the s p 500 index and how it's been rising up several points on scheduled dates what happens on those scheduled dates which are the dates that i circled here on the chart and we're going to see for ourselves well the s p 500 index rises up several points and by doing so they're bringing up several ticker symbols not all of them but most of them up with them and these ticker symbols are rising up 30 cents to three dollars per share and i know it doesn't sound like a lot but per share that does add up and one thing i am really big on is profits if you put a dollar into the market and you get out with two dollars you've made profits you've done what the whole purpose of being in the market is for to maximize profits and minimize losses and with the federal reserve pumping the markets on these scheduled dates bringing the s p 500 index up also brings up individual ticker symbols with them and again 30 cents to three dollars may not sound like a lot of profit per share but that does add up and like i say profits are profits so we're going to look here at some of the dates so that you guys can see what i talk about in the video and it's a weekly series i wouldn't want you guys to miss out on it definitely click on the video as it pops up at the end of the video and check it out but here we are with one of the first pumps in the scheduled dates pumps. So the first one, since the last time that they had released this, they released this on September 14th and the next one's coming up on October 14th, which is like a week from now. And on the 15th, they scheduled it. And as you can see, this is the 14th and the 15th is this big green bar and it rose up. So on the 14th, we were at around 33.84 and it rose up to 3420. I mean, that's 40 points risen on the S P 500 index. And that's creating that catalyst for individual ticker symbols to rise up 30 cents to $3. We're going to look at another one here. And the next one was on September 22nd. And here we are on the 21st after falling from that last pump and the market had been falling. And you could see that there is volatility on every single day of the market before the dates of the pumps but on the dates of the pumps are the days that the most green happens 
for the most part. Not every time, but for the most part. But on the 21st, which was a Monday, it was rising up and it rose up to this point here. And the next one was the 22nd. So this is the last 21st candlestick and this is the first 22nd candlestick. And we were at 3270. This one rose up all the way up here to this point right here. This was the last 22nd candlestick to 3319. I mean, if we go back, we were at 3270, 3319. That's almost 50 point jump here for the S&P 500 index. And again, individual ticker symbols rose up with it and it created that catalyst a little bit before the anticipation. And on that date, it rose up. Now on this next pump, which was a little bit different, there was a catalyst formed beforehand and it rose up to these highs on the 28th of about 33.59. It actually dipped on the date of the next pump, which we see it here, which was on the 29th of September. And the next one was on the 6th, which just happened yesterday. And it actually slightly dipped. Now, not every time is these pumps going to rise up the market like we've seen here by a lot of points but it still rises it back up or levels it off from hitting newer lows and leveling off the market itself. Because if we look at the previous notes that I did beforehand, it was actually rising up with it. The volatility was there, but you were able to buy, like for example, how we bought here on the 15th and it rose up. Well, it's been falling and then very volatile here up and down. Beforehand, you can buy at the beginning of the schedule pump dates and hold a couple weeks and ride out several pumps and you were going on your way up but right now even as the market's going down it's a great opportunity to take advantage of the fact that the federal reserve is pumping the markets and there's an opportunity to make profits so here we are on the 29th and it fell to lows of 33.28 and it rose up to these highs here of 33.49 i know it doesn't sound like a lot but that's still a 20 point jump after dipping and recovering and then it continued to work its way up to newer highs now here on the sixth which on the fifth it started to rise it leveled off this is the last candlestick of the fifth coming up right now and we're about to see it here yes this is the last candlestick of the fifth and it rose up and all the way to the last candlestick of the sixth it rose up another 20 points i mean we're down here and it ended up around here so Right now, something I'm noticing is that these pumps are creating less of an effect on the market, but it's creating that upward direction from falling to newer lows, but it's still helping the market rise up. And even though the S&P 500 index is rising several points, there are individual ticker symbols rising up. Like I said, 30 cents to $3. Check out the video. I go into more detail. I don't want you guys to miss out on this great information. Click on it. And thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money.